Let's talk about this status sort of handler because if we really want to engineer this for the long term, we've also got to think about the consistency of everything we do. Consistency is where we win or lose the game. And it's not just about us, it's about the next set of developers that come in here to be able to maintain and do things in a consistent way. And so there are things that we're gonna want that can easily get out of hand fairly quickly. Things like, it would be nice to be able to trace uh, every handler or every request that comes in, right? And since the handler is at the entry point really of a request, if I put logging inside this handler function over time, that logging is going to mutate and change and not be consistent. Um, you know, lower level aspects of the response that we, that we send back, we want to make sure there's consistency in that. In fact, if we're choosing here to use JSON kind of as the uh, HTTP, you know, JSON over HTTP, then we got to make sure headers are all set and things like that. But even more important, one time I was using a web API that was supposed to be returning JSON, and I could get it to return XML. It looked like what the company did is they needed a JSON-based API, and they just built a proxy in front of their XML-based API. And every once in a while, I found a code path where the XML wouldn't be marshaled to JSON. Like, we can't have that. Here's another thing we can't have. I don't know how many of you have ever done front-end development where you've had to work with a, a web-based API. But, and I try to stay away from the front-end stuff all I can, but I one time had to work with an API that every single web API call had a different error structure. It was insane. It's one thing to have a different response to things. That's okay, every API has different data. But to have a different sort of error struct in a different way than an error could be presented, that made the, the front end code so horrific to work with. So we need consistency on the errors. Now again, if I let the developer do all of those things I'm talking about inside each handler function, over time, it's not going to be consistent. Everybody's going to start doing things a different way. So we need a way to somehow write handler functions that only do the following. All I want the handler function to do is to accept that external output using our REST-based conventions. I want it to validate any data that just came in that needs to be validated. Then I want it to call into the business layer. And then when the business layer returns, if it was okay, formulate the specific response that's supposed to go out. And if there's an error, I don't want it processing errors. What I'd prefer is that this handler can return an error or give the error to something else that can process it so it would be consistent. And for sure, I don't want it doing any logging. Like, I, I want that to happen automagically. There's a lot of automagic, magical things that I want. But we've got problems here. And it has to do with the way muxes work in general. See, what I would love is this. I would love status not to look like that, but to look like this. How cool would that be? Think about it. If this status could just return an error, and return it to something that if it got the error, it could send the error response, that would be beautiful. Because I'm, I'm taking the responsibility of errors out of this handler function. I'm saying you don't process errors, you just return errors. And we'll deal with it somewhere else. That will give us consistency. And context is so important here. We need the context to help us be able to maintain, manage, and debug the application. We need the context in order to be able to main implement cancellations and shutdowns. From a Go idiom perspective, 
Any function that does I.O. or needs to be traced from a debugging perspective needs to take context as its first parameter. This is not so we hide things in there. It's so we can maintain debuggable information and make sure things are cancelable over time. Now, somebody might argue, well, Bill, doesn't the request type have a context in it? Yes, it does, but I, it's, it's in there for one reason. The request type is part of Go 1.0. Context came in in Go 1.8, maybe 1.7. So if context existed at the same time in that 1.0 release, I promise you this is what all handler functions would have looked like. But they couldn't break things because of the backwards compatibility promise. So they found a way of hiding context inside the request. That doesn't necessarily make it right. Plus, in a business layer, in the business layer, we're not going to pass a request around. We need the context. So I prefer, again, in a wonderful world, I would love this to be my handler function signature because I'm dealing with context right there in my face. I'm not going to try to manipulate it around requests. I can return an error. Th this would be beautiful. For the full course, visit courses.ardenlabs.com.